segment of uh, Big Bang Theory all BTS vlog uh, I'm going to give you a time and date stamp it is uh, 20 hours and 4 minutes into the day of uh, Wednesday uh, October 5th 2016 yeah just getting up uh, I've been working all night long late nights again not finishing any and this is uh, where the bizarre part comes in. Not only bizarre, but it causes a lot of the um, mix-ups in terms of time. And because and, and I just got up now, it's eight o'clock in the evening. Uh, it's not that I've been. <laughs> it's not that I was. Well, I'm sleeping all day long. You know, this is sort of the extreme teenager thing. If you want to talk about it that way. But, not necessarily because uh, when I went to bed last night, right, when I went to bed, and that's our usual phrase when we go to bed last night, uh, it was uh, uh, about 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Uh, that's when I finished doing my research, uh, watching uh, to see uh, if Obama was going to start World War Three. For some reason, uh, he's got a group of... Uh, <laughs> a group of uh, Democrats in there who want to see the world burning. And as one person pointed out, the, uh, he's a former CIA anal analyst, a large chunk of what's going on has to do with uh, a variety of different players. And one of the players that was key in this, but is often left out, is Israel. And the thing is, is everyone's so afraid to talk about Israel in terms of about their, particularly their foreign policy and so on and so forth, so on and so forth because uh, apparently now what's happened is that you, anytime you talk about Israeli policy, all of a sudden now you're, you're being anti-Semitic. Anti well, that's not the case. You know, that's, 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 that's not reality. The reality is, is that when you're talking about a Semite, and this is if if you're genetically a semi, and we're talking about about nationality. You're talking about a, a, a genetic, uh, uh, your ethnic background, it, 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 and it's your, it's often your genetics that does this. So that the only way you could be Semitic is the Jews. If you're actually Hebrews, Hebrew, Hebrew, right? The Hebrews were Jewish, right? Well, let's see. And this is sort of a generalized thing because not all Hebrews were Jewish. Jewish and, and Judaica was the religion, and there was a variety of different types of uh, of Judaica. So it wasn't there was one monolithic type. So what happens is that today's modern Jews are actually are actually Europeans. They're not actually they're not Hebrew. They're Jewish, but they're not Hebrew. They're Europeans. Uh, they claim a heritage, but their heritage uh, has a, uh, a, a, a few huge holes in it. Uh, <laughs> it cannot be followed back uh, in terms of the archaeology. And if you look at look at uh, into Jewish history, just to do a bit of studying into Jewish history, you will find that the the Jews, by and large. Uh, they assimilated. There was a large amount of assimilation. Uh, uh, the Jews did travel. Uh, they were in a variety of different places, uh, globally speaking. And wherever they went, they assimilated. And in terms of mo the most part, there were people who parked of people who stuck to their uh, uh, their traditions, their 
their views and uh, kept within themselves. They were isolated into their own communities. So this is this is how you end up with a, a European Jewry, a, 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 a Jewish uh, existence that is not specifically Hebrew. It's because people did marry into, you had a, a, a some degree of assimilation, and it produced a sort of a mixed culture uh, in terms of that the culture was was initially came, did initially come in from. Uh, from uh, Israel or, or another time in ancient Palestine, uh, but uh, it as everything happens in, with ancient languages, things change. They mo they modify, uh, so things do not stay the same. And you have always always have people who come in, in particular groups of people, uh, who feel that things need to be modified and things need to be changed and. Uh, that's what they do is they modify and change things and so it's not the original is sort of a modification they call it the original oh this is what they really meant you know because you have interpretation well this is what they really meant and <laughs> and there's one guy up ahead you know who's, who's, who's the leader who's the the sort of the guru the uh, the saint the uh, prophet who is leading the group uh, these in the group in this case and, the, and for the Jews you're talking about uh, uh, mystical rabbis and uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, anti-Semitism right now uh, is a term that's tossed around to avoid any form of criticism of actions by individuals who claim they're acting on behalf of a larger group. So that's what's happening now. And the thing is, is that say, like, oh, you gotta, you know, we got, you got to avoid the sort of called hate speech. Well, you don't necessarily have to avoid hate speech. You don't really have to sort of, you know, I don't want to offend people. Well, the thing is, if, you, if you're working on truth, you're trying to uncover the truth and learn about history, then there are a lot of ugly things in history. There's a lot of ugly behaviors in history. And it's not isolated to one particular group. It's just looking at, this. okay, well, this is what the Israelis have done. This is Israeli history. This is... Uh, uh, Jewish history. This is, you know, this is European history. I mean, I mean, how uh, how is what the Jews did in terms of uh, uh, the actions of King David, uh, where he went around and you know uh, killed everybody? You know, he, he, he did these conquests. I mean, how are these conquests? That's my phone. The ringtone on the phone, and it's not near me, so I can't turn it off. <laughs> Uh, I mean, how are the conquests of King David any different from the conquests uh, of the Europeans? You know, the European conquests, the the, the the Spanish conquistadors, right? They they wanted to create an empire. The French wanted to create an empire. The English wanted to create an empire. You know, the British Empire, right? And it was all done by conquest. They conquered people. Uh, same thing with the Germans. The Germans did the exact same thing. I mean, so how is Israeli conquest? if you want to put it in this, these terms, any different from any other group. And so, if you take it from this perspective, you take it from the human perspective, that a lot of people behave in very similar fashions, and that you're looking at the behavior and sort of, not necessarily think, this is Jewish, or this is, you know, uh, uh, and, and tarring and feathering the entire uh, group of people with it, uh, and you're just simply looking at the uh, mechanics, sort of the history of these things, then you're not being racist. What you are is you're studying history. You're looking at the particular details. But, of course, we're in a socialist world right now. Social, socialism is the predominant view of things. And the social, as I said, socialism exists on the left and right. There's a left that we commonly know. The ones we call social are typically on the left. Uh, but there are socialists on the right. This, you know, this is what, that are often ignored is that there are socialists on the right. So uh, I use socialists in the, in, in the dual term because in many cases the left and the right, there's not really much difference between the t between the two. Uh, the only primary difference between the, the primary difference between the two left and right is that the left believes in education. They're, they're all about education. They're always talking about education. This person has to be educated. The way to solve this problem is through education. 
the uh, right talks about genetics. They're, they're geneticists. They believe in the chemical man, that all of our emotions and everything we do is chemically oriented. And as long as you adjust the chemistry, he's not, it's not a mental illness. He's got a chemical imbalance in his brain. That's the socialist on the right. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, that once you understand that this is the only difference between the two, you can see now that why, uh, is it, well, why is the Republican Party and, 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 the, and the Democrat Party looking so similar? That's because a large chunk of the Republican Party are actually socialists, uh, but they're socialists on the right. They're nationalists. They believe in the genetic identity of of uh, of Americanism. They, this is the, the, the <laughs> believe it, you know believe it or not, the Ku Klux Klan who are racists are socialists. They are the same come from the same cloth, the same views and ideas that a socialist on the left has. So it's just they have different approaches to socialism. Uh, and so what's happening now is that we're watching what's going on. We're watching what's happening in history. We're watching the sort of what's going on in Syria because apparently uh, uh, Obama has no qualms, and neither does uh, Hillary Clinton doesn't have any qualms about going to war uh, in Syria and causing a third world war. They don't really care about this. They don't seem to be, this doesn't seem to be an issue for them. And ironically enough, these so-called people on the left who are, uh, you know, you're often talking about free speech and free love and uh, make love, not war, and so on and so forth. They're the peaceniks. Uh, they're nowhere around. They're not, you know, Obama is not being criticized. There's no, pro there's no, there's no anti-war protest going on in the United States. You know, you know, you would think that with all this war going on, all what's going on in the Middle East, that there would be some protests uh, in Washington by the uh, peacenik groups. Where are they? They're, they're gone. This is the same thing that what happened during the Iraq War, up, leading up to the Iraq War. Until maybe maybe months to two months before the Iraq War, there were no protests. The protest came maybe 60 days before the actual beginning of the Iraq War when George Bush took out uh, Saddam Hussein. And that was it. There, you know, so, so in other words, there was no independent thought here. It was only if somebody, particularly from the Democrat left, uh, when they pushed the ball, when there was a political push going on, against the Republicans, that's when you have the protests. The same thing here is that no one protests Israel because nobody takes the impetus and pushes the ball and says, okay, this Israeli policy needs to be protested. It needs to, have, it needs to be protested. And, it's, and this is sort of a common view of things, that unless somebody takes the ball politically, and these are typically the political part. In other words, unless there's political ma manipulation, nothing goes on. A lot of these activists aren't really activists. They're there. They're paid to be there. They're kind of the uh, the f fillings or the extras in a movie. The, the producer of the movie controls everything that's going on. Controls what go, you know. And this movement is not independent. So the movements that you see in the streets, you know, occupy this and occupy that. The protests of move on, uh, move on org. The protests of uh, Black Lives Matter. These are not independent protests. They're politically organized, and there is a political structure ahead of it that's pushing it. It's either it's typically you're usually a Democrat going against some degree of Republican. Right, so it's the left going after the right, and this is what happens. There is a dichotomy between the left and the right on socialism that is fundamentally sort of uh, they're opposed to each other, and so you do have this friction. So you have uh, you have attacks by the right on the left, and you have the attacks by the left on the right on the right, and so you, this you have this militancy on both sides of socialism. And socialism is built on militancy. It's built on this idea that we have to be active, you have to get things done, you have to push your views on things. But th this is this is not independence. It's not independent thinking, even though the left calls itself independent thinkers. This is this is indoctrination. This is 
parroting. This is simply following a particular crowd. This is your particular group here. I'm a socialist on the left, uh, so I'm following their dictates. I'm a socialist on the right, so I'm following their dictates. You know, the, the dictates of, 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 of the social right. And this is the way things work. And the thing is, it's not racist to point this out. So going into Israeli policy does not reflect on the average individual Israeli. It does not reflect on the average individual Jew, anyone who identifies themselves as a Jew. If you're an atheist, because atheism is, is basically uh, without a religion, Jewish is the religion, it's, it's the original religious society, then if you're an atheist, then you're no longer a Jew. So, anyways, uh, I think that's it for now. I'm going to go have something to eat uh, and start the rest of my day. Um, the editing bay is working. Uh, a large chunk of the... Uh, both editing bays are working. I just had to take a week off because I got so tired from the uh, work that I was doing. So, this is time to eat. I'm going to have some breakfast. Then uh, get the rest of the day started. What I have to do now is I have to do it. It's 8 o'clock, so I'm going to be doing a data poll. And that data poll will sort of... Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> well be the beginning of the day uh, and then then I'm going to eat so data pull first and then I'm going to eat alright I'll see you in the next segment well hello everybody welcome back to the next segment of Big Bang Theory I was BTS vlog I'm making more of an effort to vlog on a daily basis now it's uh, October 5th so it's time to start getting the wheels going again and <laughs> the schedule's coming together, so time to start vlogging more on a daily basis. Well, before we had just done maybe one vlog a day and, and pieced everything together, so back to the normal schedule. Anyways, it is just about uh, 23 hours and 35 minutes into the day of Wednesday, October 5th, 2016. Yeah, and uh, it's Basically, I can actually say this is the, uh, you're now within the first week, and this is why I took a week off of vlogging, um, so you'll notice a gap in the vlogs, uh, because I really began the effort to work on Cyborg Alpha TV Network, and that's all the different channels together. In other words, there's more content coming up, and that's why, uh, uh, Peripatetics, uh, which is the meditation while walking, has moved off. Uh, of the BTS vlogs and into the new channel um, called Bass TV, that's Byzantine Antiquity Studies TV, and it's on there called in a show called Meditations. And this, you know, that's Peripatetics is a form of meditation. So we do our meditation while we're walking. We, do, we have our discussion. We, we ponder different things, talk about different things, you know, and that's kind of uh, our sort of the introduction into everything. And then that's, that's beginning of Cyborg Alpha TV. Now we bring all the content from all the channels together. So it's, it's the beginning of a new network that will be on uh, on on YouTube that will be very similar to, to PBS or Discovery. But we're going to go way beyond what this PBS and Discovery does. PBS and Discovery gives you something called standard knowledge. This is basically general knowledge. It's up knowledge up to basically the second year of university that the average person can grasp. But there's no real need to do any work with it. Uh, it's kind of uh, uh, a relaxed form of academics, if you will. It's nothing too serious. This, is, this channel is going to be, in many ways, for people who want to go that extra distance. It's not that we're going to have, we are having uh, entertainment. We're going to have an entertainment channel. Uh, called Ka uh, uh, Kawaii Tea House TV. That's in works. Uh, I'm working on that now. The very basis of it is now being built. Uh, I, sh I was supposed to get filming to on it last week, but uh, that's not going to happen because uh, things have kind of fallen off schedule a little bit. But uh, anyways, we are moving along. We are uh, developing shows for it. And um, so it should be out. Within two weeks, we should start seeing the... I should start seeing... Uh, well, we and us and the audience and <laughs> the few people who are watching, we should see something coming out uh, probably uh, end of October. 
the first uh, show should be coming out. I think the first show is going to be IMO Vlog. I'm moving it off of uh, the Cyborg Alpha TV network. Moving that from uh, from, my, uh, from from there, from because uh, it started off in Cyborg Alpha TV. So I'm moving that from from Cyborg Alpha TV. I'm moving it over to uh, uh, Kawaii Tea House TV. It's sort of like an Oprah type of thing. But again, we're going to go way beyond what Oprah does. We're going to go what do beyond Dr. Phil does. And I'll show you why Oprah and Dr. Phil are the way they are. Why there's no real solutions coming out of them. And uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> this is how we're starting to slowly but surely building uh, the audience, building the, the channel. And that's what's happening now. Is we, we, the work on Cyborg Alpha TV Network has begun. This is during the first weeks of this. And this is, this is what we're talking about. About getting the schedule at the at, at, in mid August, seeing what was, was supposed to be on the schedule, and then trying to get everything working together. And this is why I'm out here doing observations. Right? I'm supposed to be doing observations right now. I'm wearing a nice winter, uh, sort of a winter jacket here now. It's, it's uh, I was expecting it to be colder than than it is, but it's not that cold. Ugh. And uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, what's going on with the weather. Let me give you a temperature reading here. Yeah, it's just about it's just about it's just about uh, sixty one degrees Fahrenheit. Let me get a current update here. Yes. Yeah, sixty one. It's holding steady at sixty one. Uh, there is a hurricane off the uh, uh, southernmost tip of uh, of Florida called Hurricane Matthews, but there's also in the uh, Canadian uh, Prairie Provinces uh, to uh, maybe easily about Alberta and Saskatchewan, I'm assuming. Um, it's just sort of to the, to the, to the west, no, to the east of the Rockies. It's just to the east of the Rockies. So t take your Rocky Mountains to the west is uh, British Columbia, to the right is Alberta. And you've got a vortex sitting over that whole, the, the whole, that whole area there. It came down from the north. It came down from the Northwest Territories, uh, and it's now sitting over uh, that area there. But it's having effect all the way down to uh, uh, into the mid latitudes of the United States, because it, this cold vortex is actually picking up moisture from. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico over Mexico actually is taking up moisture from there, and it's sort of it's sort of like a pinwheel. It, it and this is what I was talking about before about how weather is in many cases, although it's local, there's is local a weather pattern. You actually have things that are, are global in events, and then this is what it looks like. There's a, imagine this pinwheel that's, that's circling, and you've got the t tails of it of uh, sort of coming out from the, there's the vortex here you got the tail coming out here but it's all this stuff is rota rotating uh, counterclockwise and it's like the materials that's out here is being pulled in well it, it also seems to suck up material from uh, uh, Mexico T take Mexico here here's Mexico comes off the uh, off the southern tip of the southern southwestern tip of the United States and you have the Caribbean to the east and Pacific Ocean to the west. So there is a band of moisture that is now going across there, probably about mid latitude, midway in, in sort of Mesoamerica, if you want to call it like that. And, uh, and it's actually pronounced in Greek meso, so it's either meso or me, and more properly, Mesoamerica. Uh, Mesoamerica has a band of moisture that, that's being fed from the Africa from Africa, the typical uh, moisture that would come into the Gulf and fuel the um, hurricanes as they came across uh, is not going into the Gulf of Mexico and north up to the where where the Texas where Texas is, or just where off the coast of Texas and Louisiana. It is actually going lower um, down on a lower latitude towards Mesoamerica, and is going. Instead of going up, it goes across and then out to the Pacific Ocean. And see, so there's also another band coming in from the Pacific Ocean that, that's also being that, that's that, that's so. In other words, Mesoamerica, that that stick there between the the, the North and South America, is being squeezed by two storm systems, uh, or, or uh, tracks of moisture coming in uh, <laughs> from either side. And 
what does eventually produce clouds up there or moisture or a system, but that whole system is taken up, it's streamed up into the pinwheel and then swung around as, as if I'm let's take him swing my arm like this. So there's a system. Imagine here, there's, here's uh, uh, Saskatchewan, uh, uh, Alberta, and you have an arm that's literally swing, take it, it, it sucks up the stuff, moisture, a line of moisture from, from uh, Mexico and then swings it all across the United States uh, up to the Great Lakes and up and out to uh, Baffin Island. That's the track that's happening now. At the same time, down on the, here's the tip of Florida, that sort of southern tip of Florida here, right off the tip of Florida where, where Cuba is, uh, that's, where, that's where Hurricane Matthews is. There was another band, so this is the east coast here, this is uh, Florida, here is uh, Cuba, and then to the east of Cuba, that's Hurricane Matthews, but there's a line of moisture now going up from the east coast, from, from, where, from where Matthews is, from where Matthew is, the Hurricane Matthew is, going up the east coast, again out to Baffin Island. So that's a new track of moisture that I'm tracking as well. Uh, what I'm seeing here, and this is again what I saw on the satellite, is that there are just bands of stuff coming in, and some of the stuff is, uh, is, very, is not actually visible. Again, how do I see the clouds at night? Like, oh, oh, oh there's clouds out here. Some of the clouds, particularly the lower lying clouds, have a luminosity to them. They, they pick up the lights from, from the surrounding environment, they reflect off of it, and you can actually see the clouds. What about the higher level clouds? Well, in, in many cases, I can actually see stars. And when you see a star up there, and you start seeing it twinkling, uh, that's because of the turbulence in the upper atmosphere. If it twinkles a lot and it starts dancing around, and actually it starts moving its position, it's not, you're not watching a UFO, and that's what a lot of people say, oh, I'm looking at a UFO. Well, no. What's happening is you're seeing that star being blocked. And if that star isn't physically there, when you're, when you're looking at it, that's a projection. It's a projection onto a screen. So imagine you start moving the screen around, Right, because you've got now, you've got turbulence in front of you, you've got uh, well, pockets of clouds, high level clouds. Well, that's what you, what you see when the stars start dancing. You're seeing the light projecting through the cloud. And I actually sort of see this go out when it's cloudy out, watch the planes, particularly at night. When it's go out, go out when you're watching the, uh, the clouds at night, and you know, it's go out for a cloudy night, watch when a plane comes over. And you'll see it going through the clouds. You can see how. Because you're seeing it on the, uh, uh, you're, 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 you're uh, not, it's not coming directly towards you, but you're seeing it from, on a perpendicular uh, type of uh, uh, point of view, uh, or position. Now I'm saying, sort of, because you're not exactly perpendicular. There's a lot of other variations that uh, uh, we can get into if you want to really get into the nitty gritty, but for all intents and purposes, it's perpendicular. That's why we're seeing, you can actually see the beam of light coming out, up, coming out of the plane. These are the headlights of the beam of light coming. And you can actually see how it projects through the clouds. And so this, this is one of the things that uh, uh, observation does. It allows you to give you a feel for what you're actually seeing on the satellites. And this is, this is my office. And so you'll see me out here Actually, be doing. I'll actually be doing some of my news reports, uh, Tweetline Plus, from out here. That's what I've set up to do a Tweetline Plus, and I'll be doing that probably a bit at a half hour, forty-five minutes. I'll probably be doing a, tweet, a, a one or two different Tweetline Pluses out here. So, anyways, uh, I think I'm gonna leave that here for now. And let's see, this is another twelve minutes. Uh, there was fifteen minutes before, so twenty-seven minutes. We're getting close to our end. Anyways, I will see you in the uh, next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory or BTS Vlog. All right, take it easy. Professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say can you 
Democratic Earth. Earth.